Cthulhu fought and cultists. Alhazred here, bringing you some more black magic for your spellbooks. Today, we're going to be talking about a technique that will help you to evade antivirus and endpoint protection more effectively. Function call obfuscation. Put simply, when malware runs on Windows, it almost always needs to call the Win32 API in order to accomplish its ends. Detection products will scan an executable, both statically and at runtime, to determine which functions it is calling and take this into account to determine whether or not it is malicious. Now, there are many ways malware can interfere with this process and make it more difficult for defenders to determine what functions it is calling, and today we're covering just one of them. Obviously, like all the techniques I cover in these videos, this is not a silver bullet. Do not throw my unmodified code up against CrowdStrike Falcon, get caught, and then complain in my comments about how how this doesn't work. This is one single technique that you'll probably roll into a whole arsenal that you'll use in your payload creation. As always, the code you see in this video is already up on GitHub where you can access it, use it, play with it, modify it, improve it. I encourage you to do all of that because that's where the real learning happens, hackers. With all that said, let's hop into the code. So here we are in my commando box in Visual Studio. You'll notice right away that I'll be using C Sharp for this example. And those of you who have watched my previous entries in this series will know that I use Nim for those. So what gives? I have chosen C Sharp here for a few reasons, but mostly just to emphasize that you should be flexible and learn multiple programming languages for your malware development. I don't like to limit myself to a single programming language, and neither should you. There are things that can be done in one language that cannot be done in another or at the very least is way, way harder in other languages. Furthermore, detection products will work better with some languages than others, and varying your TTPs, your tactics, techniques, and procedures, makes you much more capable and versatile. You'll see me code in a variety of languages in this series, and I hope this encourages you to experiment and learn other languages yourself. What's important to note is that fortunately, the Windows API works essentially the same way in each language, so what you'll see here can easily be replicated in other languages, even unmanaged ones like C, C++, NIM, Rust, and so forth. To a certain extent, code is code. It all just becomes ones and zeros in the end. This code you see here is essentially one of the simplest examples of shellcode injection you're going to see. We're calling virtual alloc to allocate memory in the current process. We're using Marshall to copy shellcode into it. And then we're calling create thread to start a new thread in the current process to run our shellcode. Once the thread is created, wait for single object is called to suspend the process's primary thread until the shellcode is finished executing. And this is to prevent your shell from terminating right after it calls back to you. I've purposefully made this as boilerplate as possible to illustrate the technique, but this can be done with any Win32 API calls you choose. The shellcode I've chosen is similarly very simple. All it's doing is executing calc.exe as a proof of concept. You'll see that if we compile and run this code, which we can do by using the debug menu and then doing start without debugging, you'll see see that calc.exe executes, indicating our shellcode is being executed as expected. Throw meterpreter shellcode in there and it'll work just as well. So let's close these. And first, I'd like to call your attention to these DLL import methods up here. Now we are working in C sharp. So this is what is called managed code. If you're not familiar with that terminology, this just means we're operating in an environment where things like memory management are automatically handled by the runtime interpreter or whatever is running your code. Other examples of managed languages are Java and Python. Managed code tends to be easier to write, more readable and more secure for developers. However, when you're calling the Win32 API from a managed language, you need to remember that Windows API functions are unmanaged. Those are generally written in C, and this does introduce some complications. These DLL import methods are essentially declaring a method that exists in an unmanaged DLL, specifying a name, the parameters the function expects, and a return type, like what type of data is being returned by the function. In unmanaged code, you'll typically see these functions declared in a PE's function import table. A discussion of PEs, or portable executables, is for another video. So here's where the detections come in. Antivirus and endpoint protection will read these function imports, and if they include a group of functions commonly associated with malicious activity, such as some really common functions for shellcode injection, you run a much higher risk of detection. 
So, what steps can we take to make it harder to determine which Win32 functions we are importing? That's what this video is about. Here's another version of the same code from a practical standpoint. It's calling the same Win32 functions and injecting the same shellcode in the same manner before executing it in the same way. And you can see that down here at the bottom, you can see that all the same stuff is happening. And you'll see that if I run it, calc.exe will pop up in exactly the same way. Obviously, there are some differences here, so let's talk about them. First, you'll notice we do have DLL import statements here, but we're not importing the functions that we need to perform the injection, namely virtual alloc create thread and wait for single object in this case. Instead, we're importing two different functions, get module handle and get proc address. The reasons for this will become clear shortly. You can also see that I've declared an internal class called delegates. You don't necessarily need to do this. I did it to group all of the delegates together because it's a bit more organized. This is another one of those consequences of calling unmanaged code from a managed environment. And again, we will discuss it momentarily. The final different portion of this code is the meat of the technique. We're going to use get proc address and get module handle, these two functions that we actually imported, to resolve the location of the other functions we need at runtime. What does this mean? It means we're not going to import any of the functions that we need for shellcode injection, such as virtual alloc and create thread at the outset, like you saw in, in the simple example earlier. Instead, we're going to use get proc address to locate these functions in memory at execution time and call them dynamically. Get module handle is also needed here to get a handle to the necessary DLL. Then get proc address searches inside of that DLL for an exported function with a given name, such as virtual alloc, for instance, or ordinal value, and will return a pointer to that function in memory, which we are storing in this p virtual alloc pointer. Now, once we have a pointer, this is where our delegates come in. This isn't like a C-sharp training course or anything, so I'll just explain this at a very high level. C-sharp doesn't know what to do with this memory address. This is an unmanaged function pointer. C-sharp doesn't like to deal with unmanaged function pointers. So we essentially need to kind of make it managed by using something called a delegate to wrap around the function pointer and tell C-sharp what the function pointer is for, what parameters it accepts, what its name is going to be in the context of this program and what value it's going to return. I'm using a delegate for each function and declaring all the parameters they accept with all of the proper data types. And then down here, we can see that after we get our function pointer, we declare a new object of that type of that delegate, like for example, the OBF virtual alloc delegate, and we are assigning it to this pointer. We're essentially telling C sharp, hey, this is a function pointer. Here's what parameters it expects. And here's what its return type is. After that, we can just call those functions and execute our shellcode in the same way. However, we've avoided all those risky function imports. We have obfuscated these function calls. This will invariably make our code more evasive, which is always good for us as malware developers. Now, as I've said, this is not a silver bullet. I'm sure that even while watching this and as I explain the code to you, many of you are already thinking about ways this could be improved to be even more evasive and more sneaky. As an example, get proc address can locate a function by ordinal value as well as by name. Ordinal value is the numerical designator of that function in the DLL that it's a part of. If you use the ordinal value, in your get proc address call, it would make it a bit more difficult for any defensive product scanning your code to figure out which function you were intending to call. However, issues can arise with that. Ordinal values can change between Windows versions. So for example, create thread might be a different ordinal value in some versions of kernel 32.dll versus other versions. And if you get the wrong version, you may result in finding the wrong function and your code will probably crash. It's a trade-off. There's tons more you can do too. I've only given you the briefest of starting points. Now that you know the basics, it's time to tinker. Here's a quick primer. 
We've gotten rid of most of our function imports, but we're still importing two, get proc address and get module handle. Is there a way we can ditch those two and have a version of this code with no DLL import methods at all? If you're doing this in an unmanaged language like C++, your equivalent would be no function imports in the PE's import table. Pull this code down from GitHub, link in the description below, and improve it yourself in any way you can think of. Now, did I explain this technique well? Let me know in the comments if this helped you, and also drop your ideas for improving this code, both for me and for everyone else watching this and reading the comments to learn from. Tell me your evasion results too. Can you get a clean result on antiscan.me by modifying the code I gave you here? That's all I have for you today, cultists. I'm so sorry it's taken so long to continue this series. I'm planning to start pumping out YouTube content at a regular pace now, so look out for more very, very soon, especially for the Python backdoor we were working on. Look for me on twitch.tv too. I stream CTFs and Red Team content there regularly. I'll see you soon. Cthulhu Fatten.